you, Melissa, and focusing on Gap, right? So in April, this company announced that it was shuttering some of its locations along with Banana Republic spots as well to open now more Old Navies, which have been doing well for the company. So what is it about the Gap brand that is doing so well, the Old Navy brand within Gap compared to just Gap? is one of those stocks that's right on the cusp. In other words, if this drops any further, then it's going to be in a full-on downtrend. But it could save itself. It's trying. And this is great. They're trying to reinvent themselves. They're trying to do more things. They're, all these companies have to compete against the online sales. And so in order to get more sales, you really got to bring people in the door. And how are they going to do that? That's the challenge. I, I don't know what the difference is really between Gapel and Old Navy as far as who's interested in what. But I would say that years and years ago, everybody knew Gap. Everybody loved Gap. Everybody had Gap genes. Nowadays, it's just not the same way. Yeah, Rebecca, I want to toss it over to you and, and, and really pose the same question to you. What is it about Old Navy that is such a bright spot for Gap compared to Gap itself and for Banana Republic? Well, I think it's a bigger trend that we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of expansion in stores that are at the discount chain type level, like the largest expansion last year in all stores were Dollar General and Dollar Tree together. They opened 2,000 stores in one year. So basically what we're seeing is, you know, Gap's 2020 strategy of closing their more, uh, some older stores, the CEO says that these are the older locations that people aren't really excited about in malls. And those do fall more to the, the Gap and Banana Republic names and really opening the old Navy discount chain that has more of a broad in-store appeal uh, to consumers, whereas maybe the online upper value versions like Gap and Banana Republic will do better on an eat platform as long as the platform can be really consumer friendly. Melissa, it's hard to talk about any retailer without also thinking big picture of Amazon here in this given day. According to Morgan Stanley, Amazon is actually positioned here to be the number one clothing retailer in the U.S. by the end of this year. So Gap's move to open more of these Old Navy stores and double down on what's been working for the company. Do you think that's going to allow it to bring in or, or recapture any more market share? To me? I think, well, I think, it's, a, I think it's a problem. I, I think that Amazon is a huge problem for all these retailers, so whether it's electronics, whether it's clothing stores. I mean, some of these numbers are even surprising. You say, well, how can people order clothing through Amazon? The problem is that people are, because you can't try things on. You have to return it if it doesn't fit, and yet people are doing it. People don't care, it seems, about anything but price. And if they can get something at a cheaper price through Amazon, they're going to do it. Even if they have to buy it, try it on, it doesn't fit, return it, and buy something else in a different size. Amazon is blowing everyone out of the water. They, they had their earnings a couple of weeks ago. They made brand new all-time highs. The stock isn't over 1600 today, but it's going to go back over there again soon, I'm sure. It's really hard to compete with Amazon. Rebecca, but Old Navy and Gap and Banana Republic, they have something. And traditional retailers, they have something that Amazon doesn't have yet, at least not yet, we should say. Yes, Amazon does have Whole Foods and some, of course, right. brick-and-mortar presence with its bookstores, but it doesn't have retail locations where you can actually go in and, and buy the clothes. So, Rebecca, what do these companies have to do for their in-store experience to have that competitive edge over an online-only retailer? What experience well, can they yeah. offer? Exactly. So what, what Gap CEO has said they're doing is trying to make a more consumer friendly e-commerce site. And they're actually taking a book out, a playbook, a play out of Walmart's uh, playbook, which is maybe some online ordering with local same uh, day local store pickup. So you can go in and order something online, see instant customer reviews and then go pick it up at your local store. So you can have that instant gratification of, oh, this is it does work or it doesn't work. So they are trying to make a more consumer friendly e-commerce experience. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, CEO said that basically, uh, although Amazon is a great uh, efficiency buying platform, I agree with, uh, you know, with her that it's not a discovery platform. So you can't discover fashion on an online platform. And, and it's a store and store shopping experience is not something that can be replicated online in that sense. Rebecca, let's stick with you here. Another company we know reporting earnings this week is Ralph Lauren, which has outperformed the industry in the past year. It shares up more than 50 percent. That's pretty darn good in this retail environment. So do you expect that this positive earnings trend can actually continue for this company? Yeah, Ralph Lauren is uh, in the middle of a, you know, going through this whole sort of revamping. Obviously, the CEO is gone from last year. They're closing stores. They're closing Polo on Fifth Avenue. And, and they're really kind of reverse coursing from what uh, Gap is doing, which is more focused on the uh, discount of outlet brand of, of uh, Old Navy. They're going back to their roots and saying, we are at high end 
American luxury brand, a U.S. American brand. And we have sort of gotten away from that with our massive discounting at department stores. And we've relied on this massive expansion at the cost, really, of the luxury brand name that they have really have. And so uh, what you're seeing now is a pullback from, you know, all of the, you know, expansive, uh, expansive inventory and in, in department stores, uh, discounting has been, you know, pulled back. And all of this has had a huge result. I mean, obviously, the stock over 50 percent last year is amazing. And um, we do expect uh, that Ralph Lauren's going to have a, maybe a possibly even an earnings surprise and, and a beat on earnings this, this quarter. Melissa, what do you think uh, these other companies, these other retailers can learn from what Ralph Lauren has been successful with in terms of actually reducing discounting and actually not driving away customers? I, I have to be honest with you. I don't I don't like this stock as a buy. Now, I might change my mind after the earnings, but it's got to gap up like 20 points from here around 135 or even above that close to 140 to be a buy. I know it rallied in 2017, but so did everything else almost in the market. The market was very bullish. You, I, I wouldn't necessarily credit this rally based on anything that the stock itself has done. I don't think that they've been doing as good of a job as a company like TIP. TIP is a luxury brand. Jewelry, luxury. That stock looks great compared to Ralph Lauren. I think it's great not to do the discounts, but the problem is with these brands, when you have a name, when you have a name associated with it and a face and that name, that, that name moves away from the brand, it becomes increasingly challenging then to market the brand in new and innovative ways. And that's the problem. Ralph Lauren has, is, 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 is not really the face of the brand anymore, but that's the name of the brand. So I think we've lost some of that. And Tip has done a great job of retaining luxury customers coming in and wanting to spend the money and, and not having to do discounts. And they don't even have that many brick and mortar stores. Ralph Lauren has got to do a better job. And I think something's going to happen on the earnings. I don't know what, but it's got to make a massive move up for me to like this as a buy. It doesn't have to do much to fall, to continue and in, in, in to be a short. Right now, the stock's in a downtrend. It rallied last year only because of the market. Wow, okay, Melissa, we're gonna stick with you here quickly and move on to Best Buy because we expect earnings from that company this week as well. I'm looking at a chart on my trade station platform right now which shows this stock too up significantly in just the past year. Look at that, nice healthy gains from 52 bucks a piece a year ago now to trading at $78 a share. What are your expectations when it comes to Best Buy? Is this a company that can continue to compete going forward? Now this stock I love. This stock looks amazing. This stock is in such a strong uptrend. I would be shocked if it gaps down in the earnings, but even if it does, it's not gonna go in a downtrend. This stock looks great. If this stock pops over $80, which it's not that far away from today, on the earnings, it's a buy. It's an immediate buy in the earnings if it pops over 80. I love it. This stock could fly all the way up to 100 in the next 12 months. I love this stock. They're doing a great job. People still like to go in and they like to see TVs and they like to check out the electronics. And Best Buy is doing a great job getting people into the store. And that's probably one of the reasons why the stock looks so great. But Rebecca, how do you get someone into a Best Buy, try out that product and then avoid and prevent them from then going and buying it on their phone from Amazon and having it shipped to their home? Well, this is why Best Buy and Amazon have sort of come up with a partnership on smart TVs, right? So Best Buy and Amazon now are going to be selling TVs, smart TVs in uh online and actually at this brick and mortar store at Best Buy, which has the fire operating system and has all of the, you know, smart TV streamings of Amazon Prime and obviously fire and Netflix, all those other things. So they're, they are realizing that if you can't beat them, sort of join them. And I agree, that's part of the reason the stock is up and it's looking like a buy this year and doing very well. And we expect that earnings, people do, what Amazon has actually acknowledged is that people do like to go into a physical store to see their television picture in action. They do acknowledge that that is something that Amazon was actually looking to Best Buy to actually help deliver. And that's why the partnership strategically makes so much sense. All right, ladies, this was a lot of fun. Thank you both for joining us. Melissa Armo, owner of the stock Swoosh and Rebecca Walser, CEO of Walser Wealth. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. Thanks.